Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. Just really quick for context purposes here, I just want to quickly introduce this. So, uh, the, the whole day, I've done another video on this, the whole day is completely useless for Amber Heard. Uh, it doesn't go in her favour, it's boring the jury, the video depositions are really, really boring, they disengage the jury, some of them are even having a nap. There's someone in court at the moment that's reporting on this stuff, not whilst they're in court, on the breaks, but they also have a YouTube channel as well, um, Rumple of the Bailey or something like that. Check out that video, it's very, very good. If I can remember, I'll leave a link down below. But anyway, Amber Heard called Adam Waldman onto the stand. Johnny Depp's lawyer, thinking that this would be a big get for their case. Worst decision ever. Why? Because he was advised to basically answer no questions. Why? Because he's allowed to, because of the attorney-client privilege. So, how bored, like, how bored would you be if you're listening to this video deposition anyway? Disengages the audience, there's no one there, there's no persona to engage with, no physicality, no tangible nature, and then they're not even answering questions. So boring. So I'm only going to play a small portion of that or I will speed it up for you. One of the two. But then the bits that they can answer lists about 29 witnesses uh, all <laughs> this is also Rottenborn's side of things. He asked a question which allowed Adam Waldman the opportunity to basically drop even more credible statements, name about 29 witnesses to Amber Heard's abuse hoax. Absolutely outrageously funny. Just fucked their own case. So I hope you enjoy this. Again, I'm going to speed up the parts. I'll play them all, but I'll try and speed it up like two, three, four times you know, speed, because you'll have a good laugh with it, but this is not the get that they clearly thought it would be. In fact, this is <laughs> this is really not the get that they thought it would be. So hit subscribe, give the video a like, please do check out the other things I have here on this channel, commentary on pop culture and sort of general bits and pieces, but, you know, movie news, movie reviews, and things like that. Cheers, enjoy. Seated, and your next witness. Your Honor, our next witness is Adam Waldman, and I will start the questioning, and then Mr. Rottenborn uh, split that with me, and we'll be questioning next, and then it will be Mr. Depp's counsel. All right, thank you. Good morning. My name is Elaine Bredehoff, and together with Ben Rottenborn, we represent Amber Laura Hurd. Will you please state your name and address? Sure, it's Adam Robert Waldman, Washington, D.C. And what is your current occupation? Attorney. Uh, I'm also involved with a skincare company in a variety of capacities. How long have you been an attorney? Uh, I think since 1995. Do you currently represent John C. Depp II? who I will be referring to in this deposition as Mr. Depp or Depp. I do. And is this representation an attorney-client representation? It is. Does it include any other type of representation of Mr. Depp other than as an attorney-client? Uh, I would instruct the witness not to answer that question on the grounds of attorney-client privilege and attorney <laughs> work product. You can't answer that question without disclosing uh, communications between himself and his client, Mr. Depp. As you're aware, Ms. Bredehoff, the court has ruled that Mr. Depp has not waived attorney-client privilege and will not be waiving attorney-client privilege. So you're aware of that. So, Mr. Chu, I I'm not sure that you heard my question. I was actually asking him if he had any other type of representation relationship with Mr. Depp other than as an attorney client? I think he can answer that yes or no, but I would, I would instruct the witness on behalf of Johnny Depp not to disclose any communications you've had with your client. No. So just so we're clear, since we had a little bit of record back and forth, um, the only way in which you represent Mr. Depp 
is as an attorney client representation. Is that correct? I'm sorry, Mr. Waldman. I believe that's true. Okay. Um, and you are here today providing this deposition under a subpoena and then subsequent notice, correct? Yes. And when did you first become Mr. Depp's counselor? I think that it was around October 2016. And what is your role in this case as counsel for Mr. Depp? Objection. Sure. Uh, and I would instruct the witness not to answer that question. Okay, I'll follow the instruction. When did you first meet Mr. Depp as opposed to first start representing him? I first met him in October of 2016. How is it that you came to meet Mr. Depp? The general counsel that I referenced a moment ago asked me to go and uh, have a meeting with him, with Mr. Depp, and to talk about a financial problem that he was having. Did you enter into a written representation agreement with Mr. Depp when you began your representation? I would instruct the witness not to answer that question that calls for attorney-client privilege. Okay, I follow the instruction. Have you entered into more than one representation agreement with Mr. Depp during the course of your representation? Same instruction not to answer. You can't answer that without disclosing attorney-client communications and attorney work product. Mr. Waldman, when did you consider your attorney-client relationship with Mr. Depp to have begun? I believe it began the night I met him, actually. Sometime in October 2016? Yes, ma'am. Has the relation, has the attorney-client relationship between you and Mr. Depp been severed at any point between October 2016 and the present? Would instruct uh, the witness not to answer that question uh, on the grounds that you can't answer that question without disclosing attorney-client communications. Okay, I accept the instruction. As Mr. Depp's attorney, you have, a pri you have provided him with advice. Is that fair to say? That's correct. And you have charged Mr. Depp for your advice, correct? I would instruct the witness not uh, to answer that question. You can't answer that without disclosing attorney-client uh, communications and the fee arrangement in any event is uh, irrelevant. But I'm instructing him not to answer on the grounds of privilege. I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, when you provide legal services, in an attorney-client relationship, your understanding of that is that you provide advice and your client in turn compensates you in some manner. Would that be fair to say? Yes, as a general matter, that's, that's how I understand an attorney-client relationship, yes. And has Mr. Depp paid you <coughs> for advice? I would instruct, uh, I do instruct the witness not to answer on the grounds of attorney-client privilege. You can't answer that question without disclosing your communications with Mr. Depp. I accept the instruction. Well, let's go general again and see if maybe we can work at it from that perspective. So in, in your relationship with your clients, you provide advice and it's up to the client to determine whether to follow that advice. Would that be fair to say? As a general matter, I do agree with that statement, yes. All right. Uh, and by the same token, it would be up to the client to determine whether to reject your advice in whole or part, correct? You're still speaking in general. Correct. In general, yes. Okay. Now, did you, did your relationship with Mr. Depp, and I'm talking about your attorney client relationship, deviate from those general principles that in some way Mr. Depp is not permitted to follow or reject your advice? Would instruct the witness not to uh, answer the question based on attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Now, Mr. Depp has the right to terminate your representation at any time. Is that correct? But yes, I think it's true. Okay. Mr. I think Depp we need to let would be free to uh, terminate at any time. 
My apologies, Mr. Waldman. I didn't realize you were still talking. Did you finish? Yes, I did. Thank you. Now, has Mr. Depp terminated your representation of him at any time between October 2016 and the present? That's the same question that uh, I instructed Mr. Waldman not to answer before, just stated in a slightly different way, so I would instruct the witness not to answer that question. I accept the instruction. Now, and Mr. Depp, as the client in your relationship, is in the position to make the final decision regardless of your advice. Would you agree? I, I would instruct the witness not to answer that question. I don't know that he, well, I know he can't answer that question without disclosing communications with Mr. Depp. So I instruct the witness not to answer. I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, if you were advising a client in an attorney-client relationship uh, and you were in settlement negotiations, uh, would it be you or the client who has the ultimate decision-making ability? But to speculate about the question, yes, generally, the client would be responsible for deciding you know, the ultimate outcome of a settlement. Yes. No. You met Mr. Depp after he and Amber Heard had split up. Is that correct? That's correct. And you met Mr. Depp after he and Amber Heard had reached a settlement in their divorce. Is that correct? That's my understanding. So you have no personal knowledge of anything that went on during their marriage. Is that fair to say? Well, it depends what you mean by personal knowledge. I wasn't there. That's what you mean. Correct. You never witnessed any interaction between Mr. Depp and Amber Heard prior to October 2016. Is that correct? That's correct. And you have no personal knowledge of any conduct by either of them against the other prior to October 2016. Is that correct? Again, if you're asking me, do I have any knowledge of their conduct? I think I have knowledge of their conduct. I think maybe you're asking me, did I witness conduct? I'm asking <laughs> personal knowledge, which would mean you would have had to have witnessed it. If you're asking whether I've witnessed it, the answer is no. Now, your initial knowledge of the relationship between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard was based on your interviews with Mr. Depp. Would that be fair to say? I, I would instruct the witness not to answer that question because he can't even answer yes or no without disclosing the substance of communications with his client, Mr. Depp. I accept the instruction. Once you came into Mr. Depp's life and became his counsel, Mr. Depp filed with your assistance a number of lawsuits. Would you agree? Yes. Did Mr. Depp terminate Tracy Jacobs as his agent before or after you became Mr. Depp's counsel? Mr. Waldman, I would instruct you not to answer that question if doing so would require you to disclose any communications you had with Mr. Depp. It would. How long had Tracy Jacobs been Mr. Depp's agent at the time Mr. Depp terminated Tracy Jacobs? And, and again, Adam, same instruction to the extent that, uh, that answering the question requires you to disclose communications that you had with Mr. Depp, I would instruct you not to answer the question. It would. Was it Mr. Depp's decision to terminate Tracy Jacobs? Again, I would instruct you not to answer that question because that could only have come from Mr. Depp in communication with you. I accept the instruction. After you began representing Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against Joe Mandel, Mr. Depp's former business manager, correct? That's right. And you represented Mr. Depp in that lawsuit against Joe Mandel and his company, did you not? I did. But it was Mr. Depp's decision on whether to file a lawsuit against Mr. Mandel and his company. Did you agree? I would instruct the witness not to answer that question because it would require uh, communication, this disclosure of communications between Mr. Depp and Mr. Walden as to who was advising who as to filing the case against DMG and the Mandel brothers. So I would instruct you not to answer that. Thanks for the instruction. Did Mr. Depp have the ultimate decision making ability with respect to the lawsuit against Mr. Mandel and his company? And again, I would instruct you not to answer to the extent it requires you to disclose attorney uh, client communication. It would. After you began representing Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against Jake Bloom, Mr. Depp's former attorney, correct? 
That's correct. And you represented Mr. Depp in that lawsuit against Jake Blum and his law firm, did you not? I did. But it was Mr. Depp's decision on whether to file the lawsuit against Mr. Blum and his law firm, is that correct? Again, I would instruct the witness not to answer to the extent it requires him to disclose attorney client communication. Mr. Again, Mr. Depp, though, was the ultimate decision maker in connection with any decisions made in the, in the litigation against Mr. Blum's law firm. Do you agree? Same instruction, not to answer. It's basically the same uh, question. Gussie Depp, that's all. Same instruction, not to answer. After you began representing Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against the Sun newspaper, and editor in chief, Dan Wooden. Correct. Was it one of your correct? For purpose of this deposition, the deposition I made against the lawsuit against the Sun newspaper, you had to do a counsel statement. Yes, that's true. Do you recall when that was? I will. Well, I wrote several letters to ask why I was suspended for life from the platform, and the response that I received was, uh, multiple violations of policy, so I asked, within one example of those multiple violations, and they responded by saying, now they were appealing without my asking to do so, my suspension, and that's when they sent me a note that I was suspended for life. So just so the record's clear, so you have been suspended for life, Arthur? Yes. Okay. Do you have a Twitter account now? No. Do you still communicate with the press relating to Mr. Depp? And I would instruct the witness not to answer the question to the extent that it requires you to disclose communications between you and Johnny. It would, so I accept the instruction. Do you still communicate with the press on Mr. Depp's behalf? Same instruction, uh, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Has Mr. Depp ever asked you not to speak to the press? Same instruction, same grounds. Uh, Clearly, face it, it would require Mr. Depp, Mr. Walden, to disclose communications with Mr. Depp, which he will not do. It, it would, and I accept the instruction. Would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press? I will instruct the witness not to answer because it's an end of the time for a little spotter, but I'll instruct the witness not to answer. I accept the instruction. Has Mr. Depp ever asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? Instruct the witness not to answer the question on the three-point approach. I accept the instruction. I accept the instruction. Would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I will instruct the witness not to answer the question on the three-point approach. I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever asked you to retract or retract any statements made in the press about issues involving him and her, would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving him and her? I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp ever as
um, various times that uh, there were no injuries to her face whatsoever between the 21st uh, and the 27th when suddenly there were bruises. Um, were those nine? Let's see. Um, Laura Devenier, um, um, Melanie and Glacy, um, Amber's own uh, uh, primary makeup artist. Um, Laura Devenier was Ms. Hurd's assistant and decorator uh, and now works for Elon Musk. Um, Hilda Vargas, um, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's at the time housekeeper. Um, Samantha McMillan, who was Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp's uh, stylist, and a good friend of Ms. Hurd's. Um, Isaac Baruch, uh, Ms. Hurd's and Mr. Depp's friend, close friend, and uh, Ms. Hurd's neighbor in the penthouses. Okay, uh, so continuing on, uh, the, the witnesses, a list of some witnesses to the 21st, to her claims of, of, of violence and damage to the apartment. Um, um, Trinity Esparza, who was the head of the concierge desk at the Eastern Columbia building um, and a friend of Ms. Hurd's also. Uh, Cornelius Harrell, uh, who I think also worked for the concierge desk or in any event worked for the Eastern Columbia building and met with Ms. Hurd on the 22nd uh, of May, uh, which meeting was captured on CCTV also. Um, uh, Alejandro Romero, who I believe is head of security at the Eastern Columbia building. Um, and I think Brandon Patterson also testified about the uh, absence of, of bruises. And I should, I should even distinguish, because we're talking about the notion of a hoax, I should distinguish these people uh, specifically have given testimony that she was, Ms. Heard was uninjured between the 21st uh, of May uh, up into perhaps the 25th or 26th of May. And then of course she appeared bruised again on the 27th. Some of them have testified that even after the 27th, they were with her and she appeared uh, and that she appeared bruised. But during that period between the 21st and the 27th, I, I'm not sure if I've listed nine plus the two police officers, um, but I think that's that's an illustration of what I was referring to um, when I, when I, in the question you uh, uh, asked me about. Can you please pull up um, the document labeled ARW 660, please? Sorry. But you do believe that the pictures and videos Marilyn Manson sent you helped disprove Ms. Hurd's allegations, correct? As to that, as to that incident, uh, Thanksgiving, perhaps 2013, I think those, I think those videos uh, and photographs, yes, demolished her claim. Have you communicated with other social media um, users about this case other than public messaging platforms? Let me, let me ask that differently. Have you communicated privately with other social media users about this case? Um, other social media, I want to make sure I'm precise. Other social media users? Yes. Uh, that, would, that, would that group would include almost everybody on earth. Have you provided information about this case to other social media personalities who then post that information? Um, I've provided information episodically to what I would what I would call internet journalists, and I'll define that as journalists who are not affiliated with. You mentioned, I think, NBC a moment ago, or, or a, you know, a, a mainstream media outlet. Have you communicated with um, a social media user who goes by the name that umbrella guy? Um, I've had several phone calls with a with the person who goes by the name that umbrella guy. I don't actually know his real name. Um, have you communicated with him other than through phone calls? Um, 
I don't remember doing so, no. Um, what are other, well, let me ask you this. Do you, have you communicated in a similar fashion with someone on social media who goes by the name that Brian fella? Yes. Um, what about someone who goes by the name the real Laura B? Yes. And have you communicated to those individuals listed um, evidence that you believe suggests that Miss Hurd's allegations are hoaxes? Um, I would say I communicate with the internet journalists because we put them in a category calling them that. I, I've done that exactly the same way I would communicate with mainstream media. Um, if they have questions about evidence or the facts, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll inform them. And have you, in, when you communicate with them, do you do so, you testified some by phone, correct? Yes. Do you do so by text or messenger platform? Largely, I think by phone, but if I, if I communicated in writing, it would be probably by signal. Can you please pull up uh, the exhibits um, ALH 17001 to 2, please? Turn on the screen, exhibit 24. No, my question, well, my first question is, um, is that in that box where it says first on the record statement um, from me regarding the body cam to RTL, Adam Waldman, Johnny Depp's attorney, is that... Um, is that a statement that you made to um, a German media outlet called RTL? Yes. And in that statement, you say that LAPD have now opened up a criminal investigation into perjury of Ms. Hurd, correct? Yes. Did you, um, did, you, did you make a correction to RTL when you learned that the LAPD wasn't in fact investigating uh, Ms. Hurd for perjury? Well, the way you've characterized it is not exactly what I would agree with. The LAPD told me that they were uh, investigating the, uh, the perjury claim at that time. Then sequentially came the statement. Then came notification from the LAPD that it was actually the LA Sheriff's Department that was investigating it. And that was the last I heard about it. And who notified you from the LAPD that it was allegedly the Sheriff's Department who was investigating it? The same, uh, the same desk officer at Fodil. And when I say he's the desk officer, I, I don't know if that's not necessarily the job title. How did you find his, um, do you have his contact information? Uh, I don't think I do. I don't know, but I don't, well, I, I'm not sure. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I asked you this. Um, how did you come into contact with this desk officer? I brought a binder of information, um, including the um, statements that had been made um, and the evidence showing that those statements were false. In your view. So you, you took a binder to the LAPD and spoke to this desk officer? Correct. And was that the only time that you spoke to this person? The two times. Were they both in person? Oh, maybe it's three, it's two or three times. No, um, no, two times we're on the phone. Was the first meeting in person when you brought this binder? No, the first was on the telephone. So the, the investigation was opened up at your request <laughs> after you brought this binder? to the desk officer, is that no, right? I didn't, ask him, I didn't ask him to open an investigation. I filed a claim uh, with the LAPD um, regarding these perjurious statements that Ms. Hurd and her best friend, Rocky Pennington, had made uh, to a court. Was that claim that you filed in writing? Yes. Do you know whether that claim was 
produced as part of this, your document production in this case, because I certainly haven't seen it. I don't know that I ever received a copy of it. It was filed in writing with the LAPD. Um, but I don't, I don't recall that I ever received a copy of it. Did you draft it? No. So what was, you were talking to the desk officer and he was taking down notes and that, is that the writing you're referring to? Yes. Did you ever see this alleged written claim? Yes. Did you sign it? I don't recall if I did. Did you ever speak to anyone other than your client about this alleged perjury investigation? other than your client and the desk officer? Well, I think this quote that you've, that you've shown me to the media would, would constitute speaking about it. Did you ever hear anything more about this perjury investigation um, to the extent it existed um, from anyone, any other third party who claimed that they had spoken to anyone in LAPD or the LA Sheriff's Office? No, I don't think so. Mr. Waldman, uh, do you have a professional license? I do. Do you have your own law firm? I do. What is the name of your law firm? Endeavor Law Firm. When was Endeavor Law Firm formed? Um, I think it was in 2005. And who was it who formed uh, your law firm? Uh, it was I who did it. And who owns your law firm? I do. What is your title at the Endeavor Law Firm? Um, managing member, I believe. And it's, it's none of our business who your clients are, but does the Endeavor Law Firm have other clients other than Mr. Depp? Yes. Does Johnny Depp issue you a form W-2? I don't think so, no. Do you receive legal training from Johnny Depp or any of your other clients? I suppose the practice of law in general is legal training, but if I understand your question correctly, no. Fair, fair point. Uh, have you ever listed Johnny Depp as your employer on any filings with the IRS? No. But you offer legal services to clients, correct? Yes. All right, I'll say, do you offer legal services to uh, the general public? Probably not to the general public, but I offer legal services. I think that's your question. 